Kentucky right now trying to make some of those changes, trying to get more experience, trying to get older, and they've reached out to a couple of transfers that fit that bill. UTSA transfer Jordan Ivy Curry is among the players that Kentucky basketball has reached out to. Uh, one of the more recent uh, players that Kentucky has reached out to was a guard at UTSA, University of Texas at San Antonio. He has also been contacted by, just brace yourself for this list of really good schools, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Virginia Tech in Virginia, Texas A&M, LSU, Seton Hall, Ole Miss, Penn State, Boston College, Arizona State, Auburn, and Xavier are two of the most recent teams to also contact him alongside the Wildcats. He averaged 17.1 points per game this past season on some pretty interesting shooting splits as well. So just to give you kind of this kid's history before we dive into the stats, he started as a freshman at UTSA, CUSA freshman, uh, named to the uh, CUSA uh, all-freshman team, 7.2 points. Then he averaged 13.9 in his sophomore season with the Roadrunners. And then he transferred. He transferred to Pacific all the way out on the West Coast, 10.3 points per game. And then he transferred back to UTSA. So he's got three years with the program, but sandwiched in between that is a year all the way out playing for the uh, Pacific Tigers, I believe. But this past year, once he came back for his senior year, 17.1 points per game, averaged 5.2 rebounds per game, three assists per contest. All three of those numbers are career highs, uh, averaging almost a steal per contest as well, shooting 38.7% from three, which is a good mark there, and then 40.1% overall uh, from the floor, that is his second best shooting split uh, of the season there from from the floor. So he's a good outside shooter overall from inside, not as efficient, but he definitely can put it up. Experience guard, six foot two, 175 pounds. Again, three years at UTSA, one year at Pacific. And I, I think that Jordan Ivy Curry, while he may be an interesting prospect, Cal talked about something on his radio show today, or excuse me, in his interview today, that I, I not only do I agree with, but I think will be interesting to see how Kentucky handles it. Because as much flack as we give Cal and we give the staff in this program for maybe not succeeding in certain areas, this is something that I can definitely envision being difficult to handle. The fact that guys like Ivy Curry enter the portal and you're like, okay, there's an experienced guard that kind of fits our bill. We need a point guard, we need a shooter, and then we need somebody at the five spot that can kind of be our solidified starting big man uh, heading into next season, most likely our starting big man heading into next season. Ivy Curry kind of fits in between that point guard, shooting guard role. You could absolutely bring him in. But you know that the NCAA tournament is not over. You know that the transfer portal window is going to be open for a hot minute, and you know that there are going to be guys that enter that are similar to the players that you are looking at now. You have to be very careful with how you monitor and how you pick and choose these different guys. Because while a lot of them are probably going to end up going to other uh, uh, other schools here, you may end up picking one and then seeing three days later a player that is statistically way better, fits your scheme way better, and may be just as interested, if not more interested, than the player that you got to commit to your school. And so guys like Jordan Ivy Curry, while I find him interesting, he's a good three-point shooter, he can distribute a little bit, he can play that two-guard role, he can play that three-guard role, I think that Kentucky is going to be have to have to be careful with how they monitor their options. They at least got to reach out to him first but and actually get him interested, but they've got to be careful with how they monitor their options. Also, 6'2", 175 pounds, if we're talking about getting more Physical on defense, if if that's what Cal wants to do, is 6'2", 176 to 175 what you're going for? Or do you want guards that are a little bit taller? Do you want guards that are a little bit more physical? Because there are guards that we're going to talk about today on the show that I think maybe fit that mold just a little bit better. So Ivy Curry, while I absolutely would not scoff at him joining the team, I know that there are going to be different players that enter the transfer portal over the coming weeks that I think Kentucky's going to want to take interest in. So Jordan Ivy Curry, I think, can fit the mold. He absolutely can fit the mold. But what else is Kentucky looking at in the transfer portal? And what are some players that they also should be looking at that they've not reached out to yet? So we discussed Jordan Ivy Curry as somebody that could fit the mold of what Kentucky basketball is looking for. And to be honest with you, just to recap, just the brief thoughts I had earlier, 
They need a point guard. They need an experienced point guard that can lead this offense. They could definitely take a shooter, whether that's at the shooting guard spot or on the wing there at the three. Or, or excuse me, and they need a certified, like, like physical big man. Not just some, not just some random six foot eleven, two hundred and twenty pound forward. I'm talking about a center. I'm talking about a center with some weight to him, between six nine and however tall Kentucky basketball wants to go for. It. They need an anchor down low, and he doesn't have to be particularly productive. He can be somebody that averages six to seven a game, seven to eight rebounds a game, somewhere around there, but has played at a high level, knows what physicality looks like and can be a genuine rim protector for Kentucky. Because Kentucky, right now, has two very young centers in Santo Cyril and Jaden Quaintance. Quaintance coming in as a 17-year-old, he's going to need a lot of time to truly develop. Santo, a little bit more physical than him, but I'd be curious to see what his role would look like over somebody like a 5 or or Power 6 transfer addition. So we talked about Ivy Curry. Let's take a look at some other players that Kentucky basketball could land. They've reached out to Clifford Amori. We talked about him earlier this week, a transfer from Rutgers who was solid uh, for four seasons at Rutgers with the Scarlet Knights. Kentucky offered him coming out of high school. St. John's right now is a team that is very interested in him. I think Kentucky is also in the mix as well. As kid, I think, anchored one of the better interior defenses in the Big Ten for the past, I would say, two seasons for sure. Three seasons, you can also make that conversation as well. He was their primary center on a team that was really solid in two-point field goal percentage and effective field goal percentage as a whole. Um, Also got some blocks as well. Um, So not only was he blocking shots, he was affecting shots. That's something that we think is really important here on the show, talking about what makes a good rim protector. It's not just a kid that racks up blocks. It's a kid that also just affects shots and holds teams to a low field goal percentage. So Clifford Amore, I think, could fit that big man role. Uh, Also a little bit more versatile, I would say, than maybe your typical five man, but I like that in him. I think Kentucky could utilize that, especially with some of the quick pieces that they put around him. I think it could be fun, but he's he's got that anchor in him. He's got that dog in him, as some people like to say. So Ivy Curry also, I think, could be somebody that Kentucky pursues right now. Absolutely. We talked about him just now. So let's get to two more transfers. Jalen Blackman. Jalen Blackman is an interesting, interesting prospect. Six foot three, 180 pounds out of Stetson. Played his first year in college at Grand Canyon, then transferred to Stetson. It's been there for the past two years. 20 point, 21.3 points per game this past season. 90% from the foul, foul line, 38% from three. from inside the arc, all of those solid numbers, while averaging almost three rebounds and two assists per game. Defensively, not a ton of stats to go off of here. Not a ton of stats to go off, period, outside his shooting numbers and his points. 21.3 points per game. He averaged 15 as a sophomore, by the way. He was on on the court a lot for the Stetson team, and I believe they lost to UConn in the uh, in the first round uh, of the NCAA tournament. If I'm not mistaken, he had 14 points, and that game did not shoot well from beyond the arc. But the game before that, for Jalen Blackman, 43 points per game, or excuse me, 43 points total, 5 of 9 from 3 in uh, the A-Sun Conference Tournament, also was A-Sun Tournament MVP. Jalen Blackman, I think, would absolutely be a very, very interesting piece uh, for Kentucky basketball and something else to look at here. He's from Marion, Indiana. He's the son of former Kentucky Wildcat James Blackman. So you've got the Kentucky tie. You've got the regional tie. you got a bucket getter. Kentucky's looking for a bucket getter. Six foot three, 180 pounds. Make it happen. I'd like to see this happen. I'd like to see Jalen Blackman in a blue and white uniform next season. I say yes to this. There, there's, there's nothing else I have to say here. I don't want to say he's a must-get. 21 points per game and then 43 in your conference tournament championship. You're looking for kids that can step up. That's a kid that's shown, even in the last few weeks, hey, I can do that. I can do that for your team next season. He's somebody that I would go after. 
And then the final, final kid I want to talk about here is Marcus Hill. Six foot four, 185 pounds, 185 pounds, played at Bowling Green this past year, 20.5 points per game, five rebounds, 2.6 assists per game, did not shoot well from three, just 29%, but he was a bucket getter. And I think that at six foot four, almost 190 pounds, you could find somebody on the wing that kind of plays a physical role for you. Sure, they don't have to be three-point shooters. Kentucky's going to have those. You're going to have those in guys like uh, Boogie Fland. I think Carter Knox also could be somebody that steps up there. Uh, Travis Perry's going to be really good off the bench shooting the basketball. Uh, This is somebody that I think Kentucky could look at here as a possibility. And something else interesting uh, about uh, Marcus Hill is previously, before his stop at Bowling Green, he played two years at Southern Union State Community College in Alabama which is, uh, I think, really funny. Just, just He's from Chicago. So he, he went from Chicago to Alabama to Bowling Green, and it'll be interesting to see where he goes from there. It's somebody that's, that's, in, that's near Kentucky that they could definitely look at that has the size, I think, uh, that matches maybe the description of the type of player Coach Cal is talking about. So it's Ivy Curry, Cliff Amore, Jalen Blackman, Marcus Hill, We'll see what happens here with those different guys. Is, is Kentucky going to land any of them? I, I, To be honest with you, until they start to get some of these kids on campus, there's, there's no telling where these kids are going to go. Also, the NIL factor is something that's really weighing on a lot of people's minds. So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. But I want you to tell me, what do you think in the comments below about these transfers, about Cal, about everything?